we're doing is examining the combinatorics of arcs of a circle. There might be situations where people are voting and the spectrum of choices available to them can be imagined as a circle and then everybody has a preference for a certain piece of the circle um, and we want to find a place where lots of them overlap. So what we did was we said if you have a certain number of voters and you know how many pairs of them agree, then at least this many voters all agree on the same position on the circle. I guess the, the first thing you do as a mathematician is you come up with a few examples of what you're looking at to try to get an intuition for what's going on um, and see, see how everything you're looking at behaves in those examples. Um, and in mathematics, really, you're, you're studying things that are very general. So just looking at a few examples doesn't suffice, but you, you use that to get an idea of what's going on. So you don't just start trying to prove things that aren't true. We started off with like a question of like, can you, can you find this, this bound for one number based on knowing another number? Um, and for a while, we just started really just sitting down and writing and talking to each other a lot and trying a lot of different ideas for how to answer this question and how to, how to figure out certain quantities related to this question, how to count things. You know, looking at them as actual arcs in the circle, there was looking at the, the graph that represents which ones intersect, there was um, looking at just the left and right endpoints. And you try to you try to you try to rephrase the problem as much as possible. B types can't double intersect each other, obviously, because they don't cover the back yeah. part of the circle. And then eventually, we came up with an answer that we were satisfied with, that we were sure was right. And then we spent the next several weeks, like, verifying that it was right, like showing, like going through every step of how we would prove this to someone else and how we would prove it in a paper. Uh, one of the things that they did right off the bat that was very, very good is they tackled a simpler problem. And it was a problem which I actually knew that there was a solution, but I gave it to them without uh, telling them what the solution was. Uh, they sunk their teeth into that problem. They really tried to understand it from all angles. And uh, in the process, they ended up solving that problem differently than the original uh, discoverer did. And it led to several techniques which ultimately proved to be very useful in solving the problem that they uh, were um, tasked with solving. When you're working on an open problem that no one solved, is you know there's a certain point where like you and your research group are the only people in the world that know something, and that's pretty cool. And the beauty and the and the creativity of of finding, uh, of finding the the structure of these ideas is really is really what attracted me to math. Uh, when you look at it, every mathematical truth there is a truth to it, um, but there are multiple paths to that truth, multiple proofs, multiple insights, multiple ways of looking at uh, that truth, and that's where the beauty, uh, I think, lies. And the process of discovering those truth, truths is a very, very creative process, and that's, uh, I think, eye-opening to people when they first encounter it.